Hello, everyone. I'm Janine Donnelly, Manager of Webinars for IBM Systems Magazine. And on behalf of IBM Systems Magazine, I'd like to welcome you to our presentation. We will be holding a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. You may ask a question at any time by entering it into the Q&A panel. If you experience technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the Q&A panel to alert us and someone will assist you. You may download a PDF version of the slide deck by clicking on the drop-down menu labeled Event Resources. You'll find that on the left side of your screen and know that you can download those right from the platform without being disconnected from the webinar. Today's webinar, Revolutionize IBM I Apps with Low Code, is sponsored by Lanza. Our featured speaker today is Tony Graham. As product marketing manager, Tony draws on his experience as a former information systems manager, where he was responsible for developing enterprise applications. His broad range of experience includes leading a digital transformation initiative that included rewriting a custom legacy ERP system using the Visual Lanza low code platform. So without further ado, Tony, I'll turn the presentation over to you. Thank you very much, Janine. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. As Janine said, my name is Tony Graham, and I am the Product Marketing Manager here at Lanza. Um, and, and also, as she led into, I, uh, I've been a developer for eight years, two of those being an IS manager where I did lead a digital transformation using Visual Lanza. So I have eight years' experience developing on the IBM I, and so uh, as a former Lanza customer, I'm always excited to share how low code can truly increase at production, and I'm really excited to talk about using Visual Lanza low code platform on the IBM I to revolutionize your app development. Uh, so here's the agenda for the next 45 minutes or so. I'll first talk a little about what is low code for those unfamiliar with the term or that might just be starting to learn about it. I think for those of you just starting to look into low code, this will be a great presentation uh, to better understand the low code methodology. I will demonstrate the low code concepts using examples from Visual Lanza so you can truly see how Visual Lanza applies those key low code concepts. I will go into the benefits of low code, how Visual Lanza differs from other platforms, the benefits of Visual Lanza, and then get into the features of Visual Lanza, including some really awesome features of our newest version, V15, which was just released. So with that said, uh, let's get started. So what is low code? Low code is an application design approach for quickly creating applications using graphical interfaces, wizards, and drag and drop approaches. By eliminating a large amount of intensive hand coding, applications can be created up to 10 times faster than traditional programming methods. So simply put, low code is an alternative method of application development that focuses on templates, wizards, drag and drop functions, automatic code generation, and plugins or pre-built connectors to reduce tedious and time consuming hand coding. Low code is designed to allow the developer to focus on solutions rather than focusing on how to code a solution. It employs the Wiggy's, Wiggy, uh, WYSIWYG concept, which is what you see is what you get. So what you visually see on that screen is how your application is going to render. So here are, again, the low-code approaches I talked about, which is templates, wizards, drag and drop, automatic code generation, and plugins or pre-built connectors. Uh, and then I will uh, throw a note out there. Some low-code platforms use like a visual workflow, um, but that's not, um, I'm not going to discuss that here because that's not uh, Visual Lance's approach. Uh, but that is an option on some, some platforms. So let's get into some of Visual Lance's stuff and some low-code. So templates. Templates are a massive time saver in the application development process. They provide an advanced starting point with many features pre-generated to greatly reduce the amount of hand coding. With Visual Lanza, our application templates will automatically provide you with the design and layout of an application, the navigation, and other features such as sign-in, ability to change colors, 
to scale and reposition your apps, menu bars, and placeholder views for future expansions. Low code allows you to skip coding the framework and the starting point of applications. As you see here, you know what your basic application design will look like based off the templates you select. So we have templates where if you want a menu on the left side, if you want a menu on the right side, if you want a menu on the top, or if you want a menu on the bottom, whatever your feel or your flow of your, your application, uh, we have a starting point with a, with a template. And then wizards. So wizards are guides, a series of questions that will perform certain functions or write code based off how you answer those questions. Many low-code platforms use wizards as a method of being able to reduce hand coding, and Visualance is no different. Visualance uses wizards throughout the application process in order to reduce the amount of hand coding. Here is a wizard you go through once a template is selected, and by following this wizard, you can have a useful working application in minutes. The foundation and the framework is built for you. You can assign tables, functions, how you view those tables, all from this wizard we have right here. And then, as you see, you follow wizard down, you can select a color, then at the bottom, there is a generate this application button. Click it, and it automatically creates your application. Once finished, you can execute it, and you have a working application that can create, update, search, delete, or view data. You can then go back in and add any customization and functionality as needed. I want to stress, this is the actual process for using a template to create a real application in Visual Lanza. And so here's the application being created. In a matter of minutes, you have saved hours, if not days, compared to traditional coding. By using low code methods, which is combining the wizards and the templates, applications can be created up to 10 times faster than traditional coding. And then here it is. We have our completed app. Here's a sign-in screen for the application we just created. Um, and, and this is all from answering a few questions and assigning a few tables. So out of the box, this is all created out of the box. Nothing special is needed. Uh, Visualance is that powerful. If you look at everything that was auto-generated from the template, it's quite amazing. And as you can see, we have an automatic uh, sign-in dialog. We have the menu bar. And if you look up on the right-hand corner, there's the search glass and it's an included automatic search function. And then so if we look at our application, say we click on that contact, here it is. Here's the actual application, a true working application. You can query data, use scrubs, and see the details on individual records. No coding was needed. Google Material Design is automatically implemented to follow the best practices in app and web design. So you don't need to be a web designer, you don't need HTML and CSS skills, Visual Lanza handles that aspect. Now, can you enhance, customize, and change the design? Of course. Visual Lanza allows a developer to go in and change just about anything. But by following that template, you can have a working application in a matter of minutes. So let's look at the IDE. And here's that application that we just created from the wizard. Here's what it looks like inside uh, Lanza's IDE. Now, uh, our IDE has the modern look and is designed so the developers don't need to leave the IDE for any reason. So, and I'll discuss more on that in a bit, but for now, I want to show you that the design can be changed in a visual manner, or you can click on the source tab and have access to the entire source code. So, the developer has the finite control of going into code. Uh, if this is, the presentation is good enough and you can use the drag and drop, that's available as well. So this is the actual IDE. This is what that app actually looks like when you come in to, um, in to edit it. And from here, as you can see, our, you can, our contact, and then you can add plus view. So if I wanted to add to this app, uh, it's as simple as clicking the plus view uh, and, and dragging and dropping some more functions over. So uh, simple navigation to the wizards. So I wanted to point out some more wizard style functionality with Visual Lanza. Let's say you wanted to create an API, and APIs are very powerful because you can easily integrate with modern platforms and modern services using them. Notice we are clicking on an option called server modules. So here's another great aspect of Visual Lanza. Even accessing tables and databases is as easy as creating a server module. And those, um, those server modules are created right in the IDE, 
and better yet, to enhance those, that code is the same code used throughout Vigilanta. So it's one language is all that is needed to be learned to customize both server and client side functions. I'm gonna to touch more on that later, but for now I wanna demonstrate how easy it is to create an API. It's a matter of clicking on server module, clicking on the uh, API, and then a wizard. So we have this little box, you follow this, it asks you a few points. Um, you select a table, give it a name and description, hit create, and um, the base of your API is created. Uh, the server module is now created and you can go back and then use drag and drop, um, drag and drop fields from the table you selected into the API schema. So APIs are a prime example to being created with wizards and drag and drop functions. So low code truly reduces hand coding. And Visualanta, uh, the low code still allows the developer full control by giving them the tools to code when needed. So we can create this API through drag and drop method. Um, but as well as if we needed to go in and code a little more, uh, we absolutely could do that. So some more about drag and drop. Uh, much like with Visual Studio or any modern IDE, uh, drag and drop plays a big part of low code design. Uh, you can drag and drop buttons, panels, uh, data tables, charts, text boxes, cards, which are popular in web design, and that's just to name a few. And those items are totally customizable through a series of options. And to this point, there's still no code needed yet um, if you don't want to. So a large portion, if not all the design, can be done right in the IDE, right through drag and drop approaches. And then behind the scenes, there's our code. So that button we just dragged over and dropped, it places it, it places it right where it needs to go. So this is the code behind the web pages and the views. Um, every object has a source tab where you uh, can go in, enhance, and modify the actual code. Visualanta uses RDMLX, and RDML language itself has been around for over 20 years. It is a stable, it is a tried and true language, um, and this will be the only language a developer needs to learn. So Visual Handle, Visual Lanza handles all the web technologies and it keeps that separate from your RDMLX code application. So as web technologies, technologies change, your application uh, will still run in Visual Lanza. And uh, we'll get into a little bit more of that later as well. Um, but that's something I just wanted to kind of point out. And then sort of the last aspect of low code methodology or, or features of low code are pre-built connectors and plugins. So plugins and pre-built connectors are a touted feature of many low code platforms. So while these can save time um, and they can simplify application design, special care must be taken when using these options on most low code platforms. Often these are built by a variety of third parties and may not necessarily be kept up to date, leaving gaps in security and causing compa compatibility issues when upgrading. Lanza takes a different approach to our pre-built connectors. All of our pre-built connectors are certified for Visual Lanza. Not only are they certified, but they're created by a company called CData, who is a trusted leader in database connectivity. So this method ensures your connections, um, your connectors will not break application as technology uh, progresses. So ours is sort of a bulletproof way to make sure um, that those connectors are for Visual Lanza created by experts uh, in Visual Lanza. Okay, so our low code platform, development platform, enables you to build your business apps faster, better, and at a lower cost than traditional programming methods and other low code platforms. So, but how do, how, right? That's always the question is, it, I can say that, but how? So this, I love this slide. So, um, so how do we really save you money and how do we really save you time? So I feel this is the one slide that truly depicts how Visual Lanza low code differs from traditional software development and the other low code platforms. So if you take a look on the left, traditional software development um, is expensive and a heavy burden on business resources. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of developers, or sometimes it takes both. And as you can see, you usually need a big team of developers uh, to develop applications effectively using traditional methods. 
However, you know, the options are endless. You have usually more control or you do have more control over your traditional programming methods as long as you have the time, you have the resources, and you have the knowledge for several programming languages. So other low-code solutions, they kind of solve some of these issues, uh, but they're very strict on their limitations. So they can create applications very quick, but limit you on the scope and the complexity. Um, the easier the solution, the more efficient low code is. But Vigilanta, however, allows you to develop without those limitations of a typical low code platform. So you can build complex apps faster and better at a lower cost. You can still create the less complex apps as any other low code platform can, but you also can create more complex applications that the other low code platforms can't, and you're still going to do it faster and cheaper than traditional coding. So like I, I like to explain the slide as um, what it would take a team of developers on traditional software, you know, Lanta is going to do that with, with, with much less. Um, so we're still probably going to do uh, take uh, an extra developer compared to some of the other low-code solutions, but you're going to be able to do so much more. And then that's where this, um, I think this next slide really hammers that at home. Um, the bottom of this pyramid, that blue section, departmental, that's where 99% of low-code excels without issue. Very simple applications without really needing much integration. However, as applications go up in complexity and scale, this is where other low-code solutions struggle. Uh, Why Lanza easily scales all the way up to hyperscale enterprise levels. Our approach ensures that you have the flexibility to create um, any application your business needs and doing it without ever leaving your low-code platform. So if you're developing um, low-code, say, with another platform, they can't go all the way up to hyperscale inside their IDE without forcing you to make some, some workarounds. And I'll show you. So this is kind of like, rather than many platforms, there's one. So in traditional programming, you have to learn several languages for each aspect of your application. You need to know server languages, client-side languages, and then language to connect it to. So in other local platforms, you're going to learn their platform, but you're still going to have to learn uh, several other languages to complete an entire low-code project because um, they're just not going to integrate with legacy systems like Lanta does. So in Lanta, you can create that hyperscale enterprise right inside your IDE alone. So uh, you're going to run into that situation where you're going to have to drop out in other platforms or in traditional coding, you're going to write several lines, you know, learn several languages. So here's Visual Lanza. Another time saver is you're going to learn one language. With Visual Lanza, you learn one language, stay inside one IDE to create the entire application. Any and all Visual Lanza developers become full stack developers. You'll use the same language to create server side code. You're going to, that's that same language to create anything on the client side. So we really mean it when we say one IDE, one language, and one application. And as far as deployment, so we're true to cross-platform. Build wants to deploy anywhere. So you can deploy on the IBM I, on a Windows server, or in the cloud. We connect to virtually any database. And then, you know, and speaking of the I, we can call CL and RPG programs, and we're going to interact with the IBM I in a manner no other low-code solution can even offer. We are simply the most flexible uh, low-code solution on the market. You know, uh, Lanza has been creating... IBM I apps for a long time. So for us, the I is not an afterthought. You know, that's, we're here as an IBM I developer tool. We want to make the best, give the developers the best tools to create the best apps on the IBM I. So I think that's, you know, one of our greatest assets is, is the I is, is our, uh, it's one of our favorites. Okay, so that wraps up uh, low code and sort of Lance's uh, approach to low code. So I want to get into Visual Lanza benefits. Reduce backlog. So I think that's on top of everybody's list. That's a, um, a huge burden. As a former IS manager, I know the pressure of that mounting backlog. So, you know, every company is impacted by the growing demand for new and improved applications, but yet having to create those apps with the limited resources. So, you know, giant, backlog, giant backlogs are just a real issue in our industry. So how does Visualance uh, reduce those backlogs or help reduce them? 
So we're going to create enterprise applications up to 10 times faster than traditional coding. So if you're creating apps faster, you're obviously going to be reducing your backlog. So the same size number of developers you have now will create more applications and create better applications with Vigilanta. How do you create apps faster would be the next question, right? So we say we're going to reduce your backlog, and we say you create, we create apps faster, but how do we do that? So one of the biggest aspects is we have the business rules engine, and I'm going to go into more detail this in a bit, uh, but the business rules engine is a central repository that can be accessed by all your VL applications. So it reduces repetitive coding. It reduces having to code the same thing in every application. Simplified maintenance. We have one deployment across all devices. When you create a Visual Lanza application, that same app can be run on any web-enabled device, so whether that is desktop, whether that's laptop, tablet, phone. You're not going to need libraries of separate applications. You're going to create one application. That's only one application to troubleshoot. And then respond quickly uh, to shifting customer needs and the external, well, external and internal customer needs, right? Because uh, you're not only, you might be developing uh, applications for internal, but that's just as important as uh, coding applications uh, for, for customers. So, you know, I think this COVID pandemic really highlighted the need for flexible and quick app development. Uh, many businesses kind of were caught with non-flexible systems and applications. And, you know, I'm talking systems for both their employees and their customers. Uh, so in today's market, you really need to be agile and scalable. And this is where Visual Answer really shines because you're going to be able to use low-code methodology and create, even if it's only a simple app, you're going to be able to create that very quick and get that into either your customer or your employee's hands. And then easy collaborate with the end users to design the perfectly optimized app. So I'm going to talk about this, uh, show you an example of this too in a little bit. But Visual Lanza has built-in collaboration tools. So the end users get that buy-in. They get to see the app before it's put out there. They get to put their input in on it. And, you know, when you get buy-in from the end user, it makes the application process uh, so much easier. Uh, again, uh, you know, quickly, re uh, re ah, sorry, quickly enable remote workforce, and then full integration with the IBM I. So, like I said before, you're, you're calling CLs, you're calling RPGs. We have free format RPG capabilities. Um, you know, like, like I said, we're not an afterthought. The IBM I is not an afterthought. We integrate natively with the IBM I. We can install right on the I, so you're harnessing the power of the I when you use our Visual Lance, uh, development tool. And then integration. Um, where we stand out is the ability to connect legacy systems without going through hoops. You know, we understand the real world is full of legacy applications. And so to ignore that is, you know, um, it's a very much a disservice to developers and to businesses is, is it to ignore a large section of applications that are still in use today. So we understand the need to integrate with, with legacy systems. And so that is a huge, huge benefit of, of Visual Anza. And you can do that by staying in because we allow you to write code. So it becomes much easier to integrate with legacy systems. All right, so now let's get into some Visual Lanza features. So I'm also going to be talking about some V15, our, our newest release features. And so when you look at our V15 as a whole, this is really cool. There's like three focus areas, three key areas um, I think when we improved on. And there was something, I mean, a couple hundred uh, improvements um, and a lot of those from customer feedback. So what's cool is we uh, focused on increasing developer productivity, uh, expanding that developer toolbox, and not only that, helping new developers learn more and then make it even easier than ever to try out. And I will even say, as of today, we have a, uh, if you want to try out our new version, V15 for free, there's going to be a link at the end, and you're going to be able to try for free the latest and greatest version of Vigilanza. So that is, that's pretty exciting. So the business rules engine. So this is, I mean, the big time saver you're going to have, you know, Templates and wizards are nice, but this central repository, this is a central location to store and define global rules, definitions to be used all across your Visual Lanza applications. So think about if you have a field that needs formatted a certain way. Um, if you have a, a field that has special rules about not being blank or 
any other business rule on very specific fields, or if you have certain, if you want to create a virtual field in a table, or if you have some rules that apply to a table, what you can do is set those up in the business rules engine, and those are automatically implemented across the Visual Ansa apps. So divine, divining date, um, you know, like I said, currency, you know, those where you have to have all these three writing code and you're writing checks and you have to do it in every application, that's out the window. You don't need to do that anymore. You put in your business rule here, um, you define it, and all of a sudden, you know, magic of, uh, you know, modern technology, that is applied across to all your applications. So, uh, and then such as views. So if you have a view in a, one application, but you can use that same view in another application, by all means, it's it's in your repository. You don't need to sit there and create it again. You just go select it. Your web pages are going, are going to be stored in the repository. So this is a central location full of reusable parts and a central location where you're going to define global rules. So uh, another great feature is import tables from the IBMI. So this is used to populate Lance's repository, that business rules engine, with details um, with details of tables created and maintained in an IBM DB2 database. So how many other tools out there uh, can you import IBMI table definitions with the click of a button? We make connecting to the eye and importing table definitions as easy as possible. No special connectors, no special setup, no extra software. Visualanza integrates as easy with the eye as it can with the window, as it can with cloud environments. So it's as simple as you make your connection, you click this import table, and then you you, you just type in your, the table you want from the, your database, and it imports it. And then from there, if you want to add extra rules to the field, uh, it's the perfect time to do it because it's going to be in your repository. So I'm going to show, I'm going to actually go through creating a framework, show you how easy it is to create an entire framework with Visual Anza. Um, so, so this is great if you're creating a custom ERP. Or if you have a solution where you want to combine several applications, you want like a, you know, a, a central, a one central place to go in where all your applications are stored. Rather than going into five different applications, let's put them all into one framework. And that is where the Visual Ansa framework comes into, comes into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify a framework that already exists. Um, let's say it has an accounting application with a general ledger and accounts payable business objects. So business objects are simply the actual workhorses of the application. So this is where the data will be viewed and manipulated. So what we're going to do is add a human resources app with benefits, policies, and employee business objects uh, to our framework that's already there. So the first thing I would do is, is type in my business objects. I'm going to follow this wizard all the way through. So I'm going to type in on that, in that box, I'm going to type in benefits, policies, and employees. So, and then the next step is to, um, let's say actions. So what do I want to do with those business objects? So let's say I want to create new, I want to be able to edit, and I want to show maybe details on each of those. So all I do is I type in what I want to do with each of those, those business objects, the, bo the blocks up here below. Um, and so that's it. Now we're going to drag and drop them over. So here's the cool thing. Let's say I didn't want to put, you know, edit on policies for some reason. I wouldn't just drag that one over. So even if I'm not going to use it across all my business objects, I'm still going to put it here, and I'm going to drag it to the appropriate, uh, the appropriate business object. And then so here's just a drag and drop. I created them, and now I'm dragging and dropping and placing them in the, the business object that I want them to go into. Okay, so now I have my business object. I have the application, or I have the actions I want to do on them. Now I need to sort of create the whole application. Where are these going to be housed under? So after clicking next, I now take, type the name of my application. So I'm creating a human resources application, so I type in human resources. So, you know, at this point, if I knew I was going to have uh, maybe a customer service or an inventory application, I could add those now. Um, I don't have to have everything ready. I could build them out to see how it's going to look. And then, so, and also if I wanted to go back in under accounting and say, oh, I needed to add accounts receivable or something, then 
I could I could do that right here as well. And then I'm going to highlight them and drag and drop them right over to the human resources application. So I created the business object. I drag them over. And then when I click next, it's going to show me, hey, this is what you've done so far. You have created a human resources application. You have put three business objects in it. And then you have tied actions to each of those business objects. And so if I go, yep, that's exactly what I wanted to do. That looks right. I click on the finish. And I look at, you know, I'm starting my ID here. And then it says, okay, I've added a human resources application. And I've seen there's, there's three business objects attached to that. So I can ex actually execute this. I've actually created an application. And so I'll take a step back. So this framework was actually created when I created the accounting application, but it's the same process. All this is going to be auto-generated, such as we did with a template or a, a web application. This is all auto-generated. So I didn't have to code anything for this, this box, the this sign-in box to come up. It's just going to automatically come up. Now, of course, I can customize it, but if this is good enough, I can leave it exactly, I can exactly how it is. So here is my real working application. As you can see, the human resources application was added underneath the accounting tab. So to give you an idea what was all created the first time, and like I said, when I created that accounting app, I just walked through those steps, and this is what it created. I have my menu, I have a search function, and then right to the right of that search function, I can actually change, you know, personalize the color scheme for for my own preference, if I wanted this to be red or if I wanted this to be blue. So the user has some customization and that's built right into the application. So then if I, you know, click on the application, I can see those business objects underneath it. They're, they're automatically there. And then, so if I click on, say, the benefits application, this is what it's currently showing. So here is the actual view. Um, so here's where Lance's visual, our visual Lance's built-in collaboration tools kind of kick in. So this is just a mock-up. However, in that same framework, when I attached the business objects and I went to that wizard, there's actually other wizards you can go through to attach real data to this. Uh, you can set up the scruds going through that wizard. I wanted to show you what it would look like if I didn't attach anything. If I wanted to create this and, and show the end user, hey, this is what it's going to look like. So what they can actually do is the end user can go into that, that left-hand tab and write comments back to the developer. You know, they can say, um, I'm going to need to see 20, you know, at a time. I, I don't need to see 10. I need to see five. I only need to see one. Uh, I see we have, you know, can we have a view action or can we have, so they can, there's going to be collaboration back and forth with the developer real time. So they can open up this app, they can leave their feedback, they can leave their comments, and suddenly, you know, that's a, that's huge for buy-in because that end user is getting to feel like they are a part of this application creation, and rightfully so, they are. It's, that's a big, a big approach we take is, is there needs to be collaboration. Uh, so next is, I was talking about those pre-built connectors. So this is, this is really cool, this is really exciting. So this is something brand new. And that is our C data connectors. Um, so we have almost 200 pre-built connectors, um, Visual Answer certified. And like I said, from one of the biggest names in database connectivity, uh, which is C data, they are secure. They make sure they are secure and they make sure they are lightning quick. And these can be customized and configured to suit the end user's needs. So much like our philosophy on low code, um, developers should not be limited to a few options. They should not be limited to this is your box. Um, these are what the options come with. No, you still have full control over it, but we're just going to make it a little easier for you if you want to. If, if you need the, the basic functionality that we provide on these connectors, great. Throw them in, and your application uh, speeds up that much quicker. So, again, you can go to our page, um, and then we're actually going to get into uh, some of the connectors that you're actually going to see. So, for ERP, you got SAP. You have Sage, you have NetSuite, um, CRM, I mean Salesforce, Zoho, Oracle Cloud Sales, 
And these are already pre-built connectors, so they're already ready to go. Uh, it's a matter of you downloading it, connecting to it. We have, you know, numerous databases, um, Oracle, Amazon, Access, Mongo, uh, you got Microsoft SQL Server. And the other really cool thing about this is they're going to be adding 10 to 15 uh, new connectors a quarter. So it's one of those where if you don't see it, you go, ah, well, they don't have mine. Tell us what you're using. Um, they, you know, see data wants feedback. Um, we want feedback. And so we want to make sure, you know, we're connecting with those customers that they have the tools that makes their application design and creation the easiest. So this isn't static. When you go to the page, you go, oh, well, they don't, that's no use to me. They don't have what I want. No, we're going to be updating these constantly, and we're going to be adding new. Marketing. So um, Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, Eloqua, Salesforce, Pardot, Magento, uh, and Marquette, plus MailChimp. So like I said, these are pre-built, ready to go. If you need to make a marketing app, I'm going to combine that with some other data. Um, here it is. You download the pre-built connector um, and, and run with it. And then for collaboration and social media, you know, um, the Microsoft 365, you got Teams, uh, all your major social media platforms. So if you wanted an app that integrated with that or you wanted to pull data from LinkedIn or, or from, you know, the Salesforce chatter, Slack, uh, it's all right here. It's all ready to go. So publishing web API. So, you know, obviously we have 200 pre-built connectors and we're going to, you know, offer many more over the next coming coming years. If one's not there, you don't want to wait for it. We still offer that super easy way to create um, APIs. So like I showed you earlier, uh, you generate the server module with uh, RESTful API code based on the tables you nominated when you created that server module. So you kind of tell what table you're going to pull from, and then it's a matter of opening up that server module and dragging and drop the fields that's going to be in your API. And, and that's it. You have now created an API um, with no coding. So that is a, a great feature, great time saver. So native chart controls, this is another that's like super exciting uh, because Visual Lanza used to, and other local platforms, what they do is use third-party plugins for their charts. So you, you use their plugin, you're going out connecting to their service, bringing it back, going to your data, bringing it back, right? So you have that, um, so if your app doesn't work, what's broke, right? Is the service is down, is, is this not right? What we did is said, okay, that's, that's not real convenient, that's not easy to troubleshoot, that's you know, whatever, let's make it native. So what we did was make this drag and drop. You can literally grab a pie chart. You can grab any of those charts. You just drag it, drop it onto your application, um, give it a data table, and your chart now goes directly back to your, your IBM I, right? So there's no extra connection there. So the other thing that's great with this is dashboards. We actually have a dashboard template. So, you know, if you want, yeah, you know, the C-level, if they are your managers, if they want to see that data when they first sign in, you want that dashboard, a nice, beautiful, vibrant visual display. It is, uh, you select the template for the dashboard, and then you can slide over some, some charts, connect it to the data, and you're done. There is no plug-in. There's no uh, third party. It's all native. So for people that, this is uh, import Excel worksheet. So for those people, you know, if you want to test out Visual Lanza, well, let's say you don't have the means or you don't want to connect to your own data, um, this is a great option. Because what you can do now is create an Excel worksheet, and with one button in about 30 seconds, you're going to import that Excel worksheet as a table and to the business uh, rules engine. So it'll be available for all your apps to access. And then from there, too, uh, you can put rules on it. So let's say there's a couple of uses for this. It makes testing out much easier if you don't want to go back to connect to your database or don't have the permissions. Uh, the other would be is if you have an idea, a quick idea, say, ooh, I wonder if this works. 
throw some data in an Excel, shed, uh, Excel spreadsheet, upload that, and you have you know something your your prototype can can grab right from, just as if it was a any other table in in Visual Anza. And the next is version control. So we have a new YAML comparison tool that displays the differences um, and, and changes from two versions with highlighting and indenting. Uh, so I know I think back to, uh, you know, the IS manager's uh, big, I don't want to say this. So a big push is, you know, if you're into accounting, if you're creating accounting apps, uh, the auditors love to see changes. Who made the change? When did they make the change? What were the changes? Who has authorization to the changes? And so they want to see those. And, and this is a great way to just bring it up to say, hey, here's where the changes that were made. Here's who did it. Here's the day they did it. And so it makes auditing much easier. It also, you know, we have now branching. If you want to try a new idea, I'm going to go this way with the same code. Hey, if that works, great. If it doesn't, we didn't mess up the main branch. So there is some very cool version control enhancements, very useful for a team of uh, developers when they're collaborating. Event Log Manager. We made troubleshooting all Visual Lanza products so much easier. So we now have a centralized event log. So you go into your event viewer, you go under Lanza, and every Lanza product will be there. So, you know, main install, uh, your uh, deployment, Lanza web server extensions, Lanza integrator, Lanza open, Lanza runtime, uh, imports, you know, your web administrator, your web function editor, like all these different Lanza products and all these actions that happen to these Lanza products, they are all going to show up right here. So the other thing that's nice is you can turn it off, you know, uh, or erase it. So if you're ready to find a specific problem, you want to see uh, the event just for that particular debug, fine, clear out the log, run it, and see what errors you get. So it's another um, great feature. And so one of the last things I'm going to show here um, is about Learn Lanza. I, I have to include this because this is, this is super exciting. Uh, it's, it's Learn Lanza is finally here. So we announced this a few weeks ago, and this is our free online e-learning system. Um, so, and this will also house our new trial experience. And so, you know, it's just going to have courses. It's going to have tutorials. This is going to be all things related to learning to Visual Lanza. Well, we've made it much easier. We've put, you know, it's consolidated everything that you may need to learn Visual Lanza in one spot. Uh, we made it with very easy controls. You can uh, view a course, back out, come right back to it. Uh, download materials, follow it on the screen. And so, uh, you know, well, like I said, with V15, one of the things we did was make it easier. We, we offered some more source code. We offered more templates. And then we also have now uh, offered this to make it even easier for new developers to pick up Visual Amps and really run. So, again, I'll end with the, uh, you know, the Visual Ansa, the revolution, revolutionizing their, your IBMI, IBMI app development. We are truly faster, better, and at a lower cost. And that's what I really want to leave you with, is it's not a gimmick. Uh, we're, you know, low-code Visual Lanza is a true development platform. You know, we have banks. We have very large, you know, the auto industry, we have uh, very big customers that, that rely on Visual Lanza. It is a very powerful tool. And, you know, we help them save money. We speed up their, their development process. So uh, with that, uh, there's some contact there. Again, um, our uh, free version 15 trial is now available. So that's, that's cool. You can download it for free, uh, give it a test. Um, we can help you guide you through some tutorials to make it even easier on you. And so with that, Janine, I, I think that's my spiel on Visual Lanza. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Um, we have some questions. Before we get to those, I just want to let our attendees know that those are live links. Um, I know you're going to want to try this out for yourself. Um, note that free Vision uh, 15 trial. You can click on that right from the platform here. It'll open in a separate window so that you can, um, if you're interested, get more information and actually um, take a tour through it. So first question, Tony. Yes. 
Um, do you have to use a template to um, create an application? So great question. Uh, and, and no, uh, we offer templates as simply a starting point for anybody. Um, they're great for a couple different reasons. Rapid prototyping, if you just have an idea, you want to see if it works, use a template. If, if that template fits your final vision or really close to your final vision, then absolutely use that template. If you're like, nope, I don't like those templates, I'm going to create something all on my own, not a problem. You're going to drag and drop your views and you're going to create create that application uh, how you envision it. We simply offer the templates as an easy way to get get your feet wet or get into some um, some code, get into some uh, low code methodology, just to show you what can be done with um, Visualanta. So they're great starting points. They are great time savers. But I would say, um, no, you don't have to use them if you don't want to. If you have a great idea that we have not, uh, don't have a template for, by all means, um, start from scratch. And you're still going to save time doing it that way. Okay, Tony, before we take our next question, I want to remind those of you, I know some uh, folks joined late, you can download a PDF version of the slide deck right from the platform. You'll probably want to take advantage of that uh, before we get to the end of Q&A. So on the left side of your screen, note event resources there. There's a drop down menu. From there, you can download a PDF of the slide deck. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Okay, so this one came in before you actually touched on Learn Lanza, so perhaps it's another opportunity. The question is, how does Lanza handle training for developers that are new to Visual Lanza? Yeah, so another, another great question. So there are a few different options. We do offer mentoring services. And so um, we can, and you can use those for um, a couple different options. If you want to jumpstart your code, um, we can help you with that. Um, if you want to learn very specific things, uh, we, you know, just fire up a mentoring session, and a mentor will walk you through how to how to do certain things, and you'll get all the documentation and everything from that session. So mentoring is a great way to um, learn Visual Lanza, maybe even from the beginning or once you get a little more advanced and you're beyond, you know, kind of what, what's out there in documentation-wise, you know, mentoring is great for that. We also have, um, you know, and mentoring can be done. I mean, we can come there and mentor. Um, but um, obviously with the, the world today and everything else, uh, we can simply do like a go-to meeting and we can take control and we can write on your application, uh, we can help you out. And so you can see what we're doing. You, okay, I see that, and you have the code. It, it, it's real-life application. So it's much easier than abstract. It's much easier than, well, this is how you do it. We're showing you in a real-life solution. And then, like I said, learn Lanza. So we're going to have tutorials, you know, uh, like regular structured courses where you can go through and learn very specific, learn about the IDE, learn about our business rules engine, learn how fields work, learn how tables work. So there is that online Learn Lanza as well. So we kind of have you, you know, if you're just a self-motivator, motivator, you're a self-learner, you don't want that intervention, fine. We're going to help you with that. Um, and if you want a little jump start to your code, we can help you with that. Or if you just get to the point where, man, I would like to really do this, but I don't want to spend some time digging, um, and we can help you with that as well. So it's really uh, structured on, on how you – how you want to learn and what you want to learn. So, Tony, I'm wondering, do you want to touch on the community in Learn Lanza at all? Oh, yes. That's you know, I completely forgot about that. So, this is a cool feature on Learn Lanza. We have what's called the uh, Learn Lanza community, and this is a spot where I mean, it can be for new people, it can be for you know, pros of. Visual Lanza, we're kind of monitoring it and watch it. So if people want to collaborate, if maybe a tutorial is not going well for them for some reason, um, they can post pictures, they can post screenshots, uh, video. If somebody figures out, ooh, hey, I did this, um, you know, and this is what I got, here's my code, here's a, a little YouTube video of me doing it. And it's a great place for, you know, for learners to come together and help each other out. And then for us to kind of help foster that too, you know, we're going to be there um, to guide them. And so hopefully, you know, it's 
that whole it's it's easier to learn online when you have a community around you when you have somebody you can ask a question when you have somebody that knows what what they're doing saying oh this is how you do it your screen should look like this or this is how this is what that means and it, even if you just have a question you're like hey i don't quite get this concept you know um other people can come in and chime in we can come in and and, and describe it so it's just a great learning community for for learn lanza and we're really excited about it you know, we're still ha we still have our forums. So our forum is still for my I would say for that old pro that you know he trying something very specific already has the application going. He's he's embedded in Visual Lanza and and community is for uh, oh okay and then the community is for um, the learners. Great. Um, here's a question from. Someone who says, I'm an AS400 Lanza developer after the 60-day free trial. So presuming it's uh, his 60-day trial is over, how can I learn coding or how can I code? It might not be exactly uh, spelled out here correctly, but for learning purposes or using the Visual Lanza. So after the 60-day, is there additional assistance? So I I would just contact sales with that, um, and that way you know I don't there might be something different for for learning you know it depends if you're you know are, are you in an education setting are you teaching like a web development or an application development class and you want to show um, the benefits of low code and use Learn Lanza um, I think that would be great uh, though that's a kind of a, probably a case to case basis something you want to contact sales and and they could probably get you. Um, straightened out or, or what needs to be done at that point in time. I don't want to say 100% sure, um, you know, concrete, no, yes, but um, I think definitely if it's for education purposes, there, there, could be, there could be something there. Great. Well, I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, and I especially want to thank you, Tony, for sharing your expertise with us today. Later this week, we will be sending out a follow-up email it will contain a link to the recording of today's webinar, so please watch for that. That concludes our webinar. Thanks again. Have a great day, and stay well.